this evening. Uh, please continue to eat your desserts. In hindsight, I wish I'd sat at a table with a chocolate pie, but uh, I'll, I'll know better next time. But, uh, but please continue to eat your dessert, but I think that, I think that we need to con move forward with the evening. And so with that, I would again like to call uh, the Jackson Center Chair of the Board of Directors forward, David Crane. principles of humanity that we all, most of us in this room, have dedicated our lives to. And many years ago, over, over lunch with my dear friend Joshua Hines, uh, he looked at me after I was briefing him on some of the things that you all were doing, and he goes, you know, this is God's work. This is God's work. He goes, I, I want to do something to recognize all of you who do God's work. You know, of course, we're all in the trenches, we're all out there doing things, and we never step back and think about that. But there are individuals around the world who look at people in this room who say they are doing God's work in whatever denomination that is for you. So I said, look, Josh, uh, why don't we do this at the Humanitarian Law Dialogue? and honor that particular individual. And we're going to be honoring the eighth recipient of the Joshua Heinz Annual Humanitarian Award uh, this evening. And he said, let's do that. And so we've done that ever since. And I, I would ask that uh, if you get a chance, it's, it's in the room where, I, I guess I, I call it the Jackson Room. It's that wonderful portrait of Robert Jackson. It's the living room of the old mansion. Uh, before you get on the bus, I would ask that you would uh, maybe go in there because on the mantle are the obelisks, the awards, and the pictures of all of the past recipients uh, of the Joshua Heinz Annual Humanitarian Award. And I think you'll recognize a few of them. Uh, but this evening, uh, we're going to honor just such a person. There's a lot of history in that. Uh, some of it a bit humorous, and we may address that a little bit later. But before we do, uh, I would like to ask uh, our good friend and, and sponsor, uh, Joshua Hines, to come up and, and say a few words, uh, and then we will read the biography of this year's recipient. So, Josh, if you'd like to come up, please. <laughs> uh, thank you, David. Um, it's, a, it's really a great honor and uh, privilege to be amongst all of you who do so much for humanity. And uh, I was at our table having dinner and reflecting on uh, how many of you have done so much uh, for people who really have no ability to advance their own uh, rules of law, principles, or even their family. Um, and I was thinking about um, this month, uh, Janice and I were uh, greeted with two princes. Uh, we went to uh, our summer home in Prince Edward Island, and we have Prince Said here. And we went, we went, <laughs> and we went. Uh, one day, we read uh, about the uh, uh, meteor showers, and. Uh, Interestingly enough, a meteor shower is a number of bright stars streaking across the universe. And in Prince Edward Island, there is really no cloud cover. Uh, it's a very pure place. It is uh, due east from here, about 600 miles, etc. Well, lo and behold, uh, 
that night only one shower uh, occurred with one star. So tonight we're here to honor one star in the humanitarian uh, realm. And I'd like to thank you all for coming and participating in this. Thank you. You know, I'm reminded uh, on, I believe it was the second International Humanitarian Law and Dialogues with our good friend uh, Ben Ferens gave a wonderful uh, keynote speech, which is always usually starts off uh, our dialogues on Monday mornings. And remember when he stood up and he, s he told us all to reach for the stars? You remember that, those of you who were here? Uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And so again, uh, I would ask that we remember his important words that uh, every once in a while look up to the stars and reach for them because we can achieve great things. So what I'd like to do is ask uh, Abigail Reese, the editor-in-chief uh, of the Punity Watch, uh, to come and read the biography of this year's uh, recipients. So, uh, Abby, if you would come up, please. <clears throat> Prince Zaid currently serves as Jordan's permanent representative to the United Nations, a position he has held since 2000, though took a break from in 2007 through 2010, to serve as Jordan's ambassador to the United States and non-resident ambassador to, to Mexico. Before that, from 1996 to 2000, he served as Jordan's deputy permanent representative. With his knowledge of international justice matters, Prince Zaid also played an a crucial role and central role in the establishment of the International Criminal Court. For instance, over a period of two years, he chaired the negotiations on the elements of the individual offenses falling under the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. In September 2002, Prince Zaid was elected the first president of the governing body of the International Criminal Court. He was also the first of two UN ambassadors to chair the Ad Hoc Committee on the Scope of Legal Protection under the Convention on the Safety of United Nations and Associated Personnel. In the spring of 2004, he was chosen to be the chairman of the panel of experts for the UN Secretary General's Trust Fund to assist states in the settlement of disputes through the International Court of Justice in the matter relating to the boundary dispute between Benin and Niger. Earlier that year, he was also appointed by his government as Jordan's representative and head of delegation before the International Court of Justice in the matter relating to the wall being built by Israel in the occupied Palestinian territories. Prince Zaid has also been a political affairs officer in the United Nations Protection Force in the former Yugoslavia, a position he held from February 1994 to 1996 and he has also worked intimately on a number of peacekeeping issues over the last 20 years. In September, Prince Said will be assuming a new position as the new High Commissioner for Human Rights, a position he was unanimously elected to by the General Assembly this past June. Thank you. Said, please come up, uh, Josh. He's, uh, our good friend is going to say a few words uh, here in a minute, but what we'd like to do is uh, we'd like to play a little film clip uh, in, in support of his award. So if we could do that, please. If you just find yourself... What's next for you? I mean, other than John Stewart reading books, kind of catching up on what's going on in the Middle East, what's, new, what's next for you? Well, I, I, you know, I, I turned up here in the mistaken belief that I actually won the Heinz Terry <laughs> <laughs> Award. <laughs> Because it wasn't clear in the invitation. And so I, I, and so I sent a note to David and I said, David, you know, I, I'm very proud. You know, my mother's very happy. My children are very proud. And, but I really don't know what I've done here in, human, in a humanitarian sense to have, uh, you know, to have warranted this or merited this. 
Now, quietly to myself, I always knew that I deserved it for something. But <laughs> I couldn't say so. And then he said to me, well, actually, it's not for you. It's for someone else. So, uh, so I suppose I have to come back and win it at some stage. Well, I knew that, I knew that you were upset. <laughs> I knew you were upset, but I wanted to make sure you walked away with something to make your mother proud. <laughs> she will. I, I couldn't resist. But we all know, and again, uh, when the executive committee was considering uh, who was going to get this year's award, you know, at, at the time, we thought that our good friend was literally retiring. And we said, you know, really, uh, despite the situation of last year, uh, really he should be receiving this prestigious award, and it was unanimous. Uh, but then all of a sudden, humanity isn't done with our good friend. Uh, and of course, we all know he's going to become the High Commissioner in Geneva uh, for Human Rights. And of course, there isn't probably a person in your room who's not going, but bravo, uh, indeed. So uh, again, uh, we're just not going to let you go, dear friend. So uh, please, if you'd like to say a few words, and you can have it. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Joshua, uh, Abigail, um, dear, dear friends. You know, um, given the job that I'll be assuming very soon in ten days' time and how unpopular I'm going to be with so many governments around the world. I'm going to take every award I can get at this stage. <laughs> every award. Um, although, when David did call me up, I, I, this time I really was surprised, because um, there's something surely wrong with giving an award to um, uh, someone who had been serving on the Security Council. Uh, if I deserved anything, it's be to it's a, 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 a telling off uh, in the very same uh, manner in which um, uh, Navi Pillay told off the Security Council last week for having failed to do what it was charged by the UN Charter to do, uh, to save uh, the UN organization, of course, is mandated by the Charter to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. And in so many parts of the world, the Security Council has uh, manifestly failed to do so, uh, notwithstanding the heroic efforts by all those represented here, the prosecutors, the chief prosecutors, uh, their uh, deputies, and those who work uh, in the UN night and day uh, to uh, ensure that some justice is obtained for what we see uh, happening ar across the world globe. Uh, the one uh, bright spot, if I can call that, in my uh, seven year, uh, seven months, sorry, on the Security Council, uh, was when I was uh, having to think about what to say uh, on the occasion of the 20th anniversary commemorating the start of the genocide in Rwanda. Um, I came across this uh, magnificent story about uh, a hero uh, of the UN who was never quite recognized by the UN, Mbaye Yang of Senegal, a captain who saved potentially up to, or saved up to a thousand people, between uh, a hundred and a thousand, on, on his own during the worst months, of course, and uh, just toward the end of it, he uh, had, uh, he was killed. Um, and what really struck me is that uh, his family were struggling 20 years on uh, to cope with the fact that not only had they lost uh, their father, their husband, uh, but there had been no recognition of this, uh, the heroic feats that this UN officer, this Senegalese officer, undertook uh, in the service of humanity. And uh, so I, I thought uh, if we were going to commemorate the, 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 these, these awful uh, events that led to the uh, death of about 800,000, uh, perhaps a million uh, Tutsis and uh, moderate Hutus who had opposed the uh, genocide there. Uh, 
uh, that perhaps what we needed to do is recognize the efforts and the actions of real heroes. Um, and I hope uh, once the UN uh, decides exactly how to make this award uh, available to people who work in the UN at the service of the UN, that people will read more about Mbaya Jang. And certainly as High Commissioner, I will constantly refer to him because we need role models, we need courage, we need, especially at this juncture, we need to uh, defeat whatever hesitancy uh, so occupies us, whatever uh, uh, arguments we present, and, and in, in whichever way we rationalize inaction, uh, and take the right action in defense of people all over the world. And I'm most honored to receive this. Uh, award, the Joshua Heinz Award. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, David. Thank you. I would now ask everybody to please move directly upstairs.